Back to our tester class, we're going to look more at standard naming conventions for variables. Uh, this is pretty much the same tester we had before. I've got a string, an int, a double, and a boolean. I'm going to change things up a little bit here. I'm going to make a double, and I'm going to call it savings account balance. Now, you might notice that I used a lowercase s for the word savings, uppercase a for account, uppercase b for balance. We're going to see that's not mandatory, but that is sort of a typical convention when naming variables. If you have multiple words in a variable, we'd like to leave the first letter lowercase and all remaining new word variables uppercase. I'm going to give my savings account a balance of $123.45. You may also notice that when I made this class tester, I used the uppercase letter T. So it's standard convention that when you name a class, you begin it with an uppercase variable. However, when you begin a variable name, you begin it with a lower class, uh, lowercase variable name. Okay, so I'll take savings account balance. We could print that. Next, I'll make another double, and I'll call it interest rate. Another way to name variables is to use the underscore character. It's not quite as common. Typically, when you see that first example, everything's squished together with uppercase letters for new words, but sometimes you will see the underscore used as well. And I'm going to give an interest rate of 0 0.04. Okay, and now I could actually take those variables and multiply them together. So I have my savings account balance, and I'm going to multiply that to my interest rate. We, in a future video, we'll look a lot more at what we can do with variables in terms of math operations, but just a real quick example of what we can do right here. Okay, you may notice that kind of strange 0, 0.00, so on to the 1. If you were using a standard calculator, like in a math class, you wouldn't see that. We'll talk about that on another day. Um, but that is kind of a strange feature of working with doubles in Java. Back to my naming of my variables. What if, instead of that underscore, I had put a space between interest and rate? I get a compile error. You cannot have a two name variable with a space between it. So that underscore that I saw earlier was mandatory. If I'm not going to use an underscore, I have to put the words directly together. And again, typically that would be done with an uppercase R. Uh, you also are not allowed to use things like a hyphen. Okay, let's see, we get an error again. Can't use a period or any other strange characters. There's a lot of other weird rules on naming variables. I really recommend that you look at the book. Uh, he gives some good ideas for rules for variable names. Notice that you cannot begin a variable name with a number, okay? Can't put a semicolon in the middle of a variable. And there's a few other things that you're not allowed to do also. In fact, he recommends that you see Appendix A if you'd like to read up a little bit more on this. If you scroll down, in our bookmarks into the appendices section, you'll see Appendix A keywords. This is a list of words that you're actually not allowed to use for a variable or for a class name. Let's take a look at what that is referring to. Let's say that I fix this error up here and I go on to make a, another variable and I'm gonna make this an int variable and I try to name it void. Well, you may notice how the word void turned red. The word void we've seen before. We haven't really learned the meaning of it yet in a Java sense, but we have seen it how it turns red. It's a recognized keyword in the Java language. What that means is I am not allowed to declare a variable as the characters V-O-I-D because it's already been given a permanent meaning in the Java language. I can't change that to give it another meaning. I can't say I want an integer to be called void. Okay, and there's obviously other words that we couldn't use, such as class. Okay, you couldn't name a variable double, for 
instance, that wouldn't make any sense. Okay. And so if you're wondering, well, okay, what, you know, what can I not do? Again, check out Appendix A in our textbook. And he's got a list of keywords that you should never use for a variable. And throughout the year, we'll learn what most of those keywords refer to. Okay. You can begin a variable with an upper class, I'm sorry, an uppercase letter. So I could name this variable num, for instance. That's not a standard convention. Oops, forgot to change interest rate. That's not a standard convention by any sense, but it is acceptable. You'll often hear me use the word legal. Our textbook uses the word legal a lot. We're not talking about something that's going to get you arrested or put in jail, but basically if we say something in Java is legal, we're saying it compiles without error. If something is illegal in Java, it's going to cause a compile error. So, for example, if I put here to num as my variable, I get a compile error. It doesn't like that variable name. Okay, and again, that was mentioned in the book. If we go back to lesson two, we see that you are not allowed to begin variables with numbers. Okay, so he's named those as illegal names for variable types. And again, this just kind of talks about the basic variable naming conventions. At this point, I'd like you to take a look at the exercises at the end of lesson two. Write down your answers, and we'll go over them in class together.